Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist here with a look at the Leia-headed opening appearance of Mastermind Creation's first fembot figure. This is Azalea, sometimes asterisked, occasionally in the company of Zinnia. I'll be focusing primarily on the main pink Azalea release for the bulk of this video, but you'll certainly be seeing her recolor sisters along the way. Azalea the Avenger has a vehicle mode based heavily on Alex Milne's RC design from her initial IDW Comic Universe appearances. It's a highly compact pink and white floaty car, and I do mean compact. It's borderline scout-sized. This is thanks to some amazing parts compression in the transformation design, and is... pretty dang Cybertronian. I think it looks great, pulling many close parallels to its source material and bearing a nicely aerodynamic space wedge shape to its silhouette. That said, it also does nothing for the crowd of Transformers fans who get little out of alien space cars. It's got no wheels, its back half is pretty darn abstract, and if you don't care for futuristic Cosmo racers, you'd best just move along to the robot mode. Okay, now that the crazies have left, I want to go into how this thing actually hovers. Azalea's got a little pink fake float stand in the center of her alt mode underbelly, which creates a really cool illusion and provides her vehicle form with a very simple and solid standing base, given its lack of wheels or landing gear. This figure is the base of a whole whack of recolors and remolds, and to support that reuse, she's got a fairly variable alt mode. Zinnia the Parapax Medic is the easiest variation, straight up ditching the front fender flaps. She's actually missing them all together due to a factory miscommunication, though an effort on the MMC Hub Facebook group has secured a small made-to-order run for the hardcores. Azalea Asterisk is nicely equipped to showcase the furthest vehicular deviation, removing, combining, and reattaching the fender flaps to form a nose cone while deploying and folding down a rear set pair of wings. I think it's super freaking cool that the opening run of MMC Fembots don't all have to occupy the same alt mode parking spot, although they probably all could still fit in the same parking spot. I bet even more variation could be had by remolding the fender flaps and robot thigh plates to have some little wheels on them. And of course you can just like transform parts of this in one way or parts in another way. Eupatorium adds the nose cone and folds up the wings but doesn't actually fold them down, for example. I'll be frank, going from vehicle to robot is a lot easier with this toy than the other way around. I went the other way around back when I shot and posted a quick look at Azalea Asterisk during TFCon Chicago earlier this year. Since then, I've gotten a lot better at keeping the fender flaps on during conversion, but most of you will probably be happier to pop them off for most of the process. Basically, this is a fairly finicky transformation that involves more locking tabs than you might even notice the first couple of times through. It's also really hard to do the first couple of times through, but after that I found there to be a fairly sharp epiphany down curve in difficulty, making the Azalea transformation become a fairly relaxing and fun thing after it started off feeling intense and making my fingers kinda hurt. The instructions aren't bad, they try real hard, but there's some stuff that you just need much bigger pictures for. The figure rides a very fine line, running alongside really complicated toys like the hardest alternators or hair pullingest Revenge of the Fallen figures, but skating a thin border reserved for those who do so while still bearing an innate solidity and intuitive nature. Azalea's robot mode, like her vehicle mode, is hardcore in the vein of Alex Milne's design, with her slightly additional armor plating and butt kicker shoulder pads. I think the sculpt turned out really well, hitting a solid feminine shape without being too lithe or frail. And while she's still got a boob box and pointed heels, they're a little subtle and understated, not outright getting in the way of the toy's look and functionality. I.e. it's not impossible to actually get her to stand up. The one disappointment I have, though, is the face. This G1-ass pink face is the result of legitimate crowdsourced feedback, and while the helmet sculpt is still hardcore Alex Milne, I wish the face had ended up silver with yellow eyes, like in the comics. I get the appeal it has for the fans, I do. I just don't agree with it. This figure is so close to the comic, making her face pink with blue eyes is just intrusive to what I feel it was trying to accomplish in the first place. Like, hey, it's more G1, but there's a deluxe coming out for that. Hopefully down the road, I'll be able to get a new head with both the proper face colors and the full-on freak show Glasgow smile. Maybe even a little bit of an opening jaw, that would be, that'd be sweet. Azalea does get back to homicidal IDW business with her weaponry, consisting of two guns and two swords. The weapons look pretty cool and fit in her hands quite well. I kind of wish her blades were blue instead of orange, though. All of her accessories have peg holes to store on her thighs and slots to fit into her backpack, so you can customize her look a little bit as you please. Oh, you can also use her vehicular hover stand as a heel brace on one of her feet, adding an extra bit of stability that she doesn't really need as helpful as it is. It's better than not using the stand at all, anyway. Like, you don't have to leave it to the side, you can keep it attached to her, and it doesn't really stick out that badly. Moving on to her main variant, the R08Z release is called Zinnia Parapax Medic, with a winter-fresh color scheme heavily based on the inexplicably-headed Paradron Medics from... 
that one G1 episode. Aside from a surprisingly strong and contrasting set of minty green hues, which sometimes really screw with cameras taking pictures of them, Zinnia goes an extra step by adding a new pair of plates to her shoulder pads and rendering those shoulder pads, along with a few other detail parts like the hover stand, in a translucent crystalline green plastic. Armed only with a pair of pistols, she's the roughest value proposition of all the MMC first wave fembots, with her translucent parts and vibrant green being the only real draw. Well, that and her silver face. Despite its blue eyes, it does make a usable alternate head swap for the pink Azalea to get things a little closer to how I'd like them to look. But Azalea Asterisk is quite literally the comics-oriented color scheme I've been whining about. That alternate head I'd like to buy someday? The colors are all there on hers, right down to the yellow eyes. Azalea Asterisk is based on one of the three rejected color schemes from IDWRC's debut appearance, and definitely the one to make into a figure, as the other two were reddish and thus a lot closer to her existing pink. The spots of pale orange detail and the hardcore translucent orange cockpit window and wing bits make this the most visually striking Azalea to date, though I admit I haven't handled a stealth Azalea in person yet. And swapping her head onto Azalea the Avenger yields a pretty great looking comic book RC. It's just a shame that Azalea Asterisk, the strongest of the Leia headed ones I've seen so far, was also a TFCon Chicago dealer room exclusive that is pretty well sold out everywhere as of this recording. So Azalea's head's on a ball joint which can go left, right, tilt around, all over the place. She can even kind of look up. Thing is, that she can only do that when she's not looking straight forward. When she's looking straight forward and she's transformed correctly such that her collar piece is tabbed into her boob box, uh, this pink stick on the back prevents her head from going back. Now, a lot of people tend to just mistransform her. Uh, you kind of just wedge that stuff together and have a, a wider space back here so that she's got more room to look up. There's a whole bunch of like triple jointings back here and whatnot. I prefer having her fully connected up here in the front. But, uh, you know, whatever is your pleasure. It's a ball-jointed neck, and it's pretty good whatever it is you're doing. She's also got a double bar... bar <laughs> double barbell ball joints in her shoulders, where there's a ball and a ball, and that gives her very decent range of shoulder motion in many directions. Her little shoulder pads can be flipped up if you like. I like that. She's got a bicep swivel, double jointed elbow, and a wrist swivel, and then this panel can swivel too, if you prefer to have it up top or sideways or something like that. It's up to you. She's got two ball joints, one in her mid torso and one in her waist. Depending on how all the stuff back here is arranged, this allows you a pretty decent range of motion. It just depends on like which one you want to move. I find it's easier for side to side stuff to just move this joint and to use the two of them for uh, a little bit of crunching. Uh, you can uh, turn this one sideways as well, and you can tilt it sideways a little bit if you like. So there's a, there's a lot of potential in here. You just gotta remember that you can use them both, and then all of your options are open to you. These two little hip skirt things are on ball joints, and they're kind of annoying, because they wrap around enough that it's pretty easy for them to start getting caught up and banging against like this stick here, or even sometimes over here. Um, so I try to get them just up and out of the way as much as possible, because she does have uh, simple ball jointed hips with a wide range, like all the way out to here on the Van Dam scale, and uh, a thigh swivel um, down here just above the knee. And then this pink panel can also slide around on its own, depending on what you want to do. Uh, she's kind of got that whole uh, reformatted aesthetic of like, there are a lot of parts on parts that can kind of just move around depending on your aesthetic taste. Um, her knee joint is double jointed as well, although, uh, one of those joints will take it like, like this one is, you know, fine. This one will unseat it from the kneecap and that could look a bit weird, but, you know, whatever you like. Uh, she's got a big ankle tilt. Boom, not garbage, and then her toe moves up and down, but her heel does not. And that's kind of important, because particularly when you're using this, uh, you know, little hover stand thing, that means that her standing base must always be a 90 degree perpendicular thing to her shin, uh, on at least one foot. That can kind of get in the way of some stuff, surprisingly. Uh, especially because her uh, foot only tilts this like this. It doesn't rotate and it doesn't tilt forward and backwards. So it, it's a surprising limitation I've hit every now and then. It's nothing I can't overcome. Worst case, I can also just take this off. She's still able to stand without it. Um, you know, I keep intimating that it's not very hard to stand her without it. I don't think it is. I mean, she's tilted here and she's standing without it. But on an uneven surface, it can get a bit tricky to get her standing. Um, 
It's thanks to her foot design, really, that it's so much easier than you might think to keep her standing, because she doesn't have, like, stiletto high heels. There's a, you know, a wide, flat sole of the foot here, and a pretty wide, flat heel there. So, uh, that plus her ankle tilts means that a lot of basic poses, she can stand pretty well. It's just when you get into crazy stuff where you'd want to twist her foot around, it ain't gonna happen. Um, as for durability, this is a durable toy, man. I mean, it's made of a lot of small pieces. Uh, you probably don't want to, like, whip it at stuff. Like, if you throw it at things, I'm sure, like, the weapons will fall off. This thing will, will fall off. The, the actual core of the toy, though, it's not, unless you're, like, literally hurling it straight at a wall, I think it'll be fine. Uh, and that's part of what makes her posability work, is the actual joints feel really good. And, uh, you know, they don't, they don't fall apart. They don't really flop all that much, if at all, ever. Uh, so unless you, like, do that, she's gonna be fine. And, I mean, why would you ever do that? That would be a really stupid thing to do with a $60 toy. It'd be even dumber to do with a variant that's going for, like, 250 bucks now. Like, that would be idiotic. Uh, as for Zinnia, I, why would you do that to Zinnia? You know, everyone picks on Zinnia for not having stuff. What are you guys, a bunch of cruel jerks? I didn't think so. Ever since Griffith first shared the Azalea design during the Feral Rex Megathread Silver Age, and after I got to handle the prototype at BotCon in 2013, I'd been looking forward to getting a production copy of this figure in hand. Its construction is made of aggregate layers of finicky engineering, and thanks to its sturdy build quality, it isn't fragile and unplayable as a result. There are some clever ideas in this piece, albeit ones that tread about as close to the overcomplexity threshold as I'd like to get in a modern transforming robot toy. If there's anything to hold against Azalea, it'd be her abstract vehicle mode, but, like, it's the source material and the design intent. Personally, I dig it a lot. However, I can respect that a Cybertronian alt mode, especially one as made of bits and pieces as this, is a proven turnoff for a decent segment of the fandom. And if you're in that demographic, Azalea's vehicle form is unapologetically alien. It does not in any way try to accommodate Earthen aesthetics whatsoever. But if that doesn't critically cross paths with your personal taste, at least one kind of this mold, present or upcoming, is well worth consideration, especially at the frankly nominal price of around 60 bucks. Unfortunately, Zinni is the last one to pick for dodgeball, given that her main draws are the color green, translucent bits, and a halfway workable comic head swap for the pink one. Leaving her to the side, though, if you're an unlicensed third-party Convertotron buyer, a fully equipped Azalea is one of that market's best bang for your bucks of 2014. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and I'm pretty excited for you, Petorium and Salvia Promenon. Promenon? Promen? Promen? I really like this mold and want to see some more. Bring on crossbows and shower me with god hammers. Concuss me with all that concussive solace, baby!